Hi everyone, here I am again. It is June 2nd, 2021, The Burning Platform. This is where we are. Is your, is your seat getting hotter and hotter? Or are you, you know, right on up here, away from the flames? This is where we are. And guess what? There are no solutions. All right, go ahead. Get it out. Tell me how hopeless I am, how negative I am, how I need, I need, I need Jesus. Okay. I'm not going to read much of this article, but I agree. I agree with him. The propaganda, the fear propaganda has been very successful. Um, Do no harm has been replaced by how much will you pay me to endorse? Whatever. But here, the unproven drug. Oh, so much I can't read. You can read it. You can pause the video and read it yourself. But really, bribing... Bribing the masses with donuts, fast food, hamburgers, french fries, million dollar lotteries. That's frightening. I don't know if any of you picked up on that. The majority of Americans have been conditioned to believe their government and their leaders. The oligarchs have nearly perfected the art of manipulation. They have utilized propaganda, public school indoctrination, and uh, pharmaceutical methods to create a dictatorship without tears, just as Aldous Huxley predicted many years ago. There will be, in the next generation or so, a a pharmacological, oh, Carol, pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies so that people will, in fact, have their liberties taken away from them, but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods. And this seems to be the final revolution. Not not a freedom revolution. A revolution by the tyrannical, crazy, psychopathic, evil. Evil. You know, evil doesn't care about you. Evil doesn't want good. Evil likes to destroy. We are living destruction every single day. So that's what we're living. The good have to, oh, I'd like to say Trump, but, mm, well, uh, the good have to fight the evil. Uh, You know, good people sitting around doing nothing. You know what that is, right? They ain't good. So, when I write articles detailing the subversion of our country by the deep state, criminal cabal, ruling elite, oligarchy, a frequent common comment has been, he is great at detailing the problems. How come he never offers any solutions? If you post articles or videos, how many of you get that? Oh my God, 12 years and wow, still getting it. Amazing. Adults have to ask another adult, what's the solution? Okay. I, along with the author of this article, have presented many solutions in crickets. 
That comment always irritates me because I have proposed solutions for over a decade which never had a chance of being implemented or even considered. I wrote an article one week after the election of Obama in November 2008. U.S. economy, there are no problems, only solutions, which laid out dozens of solutions to what I considered the major problems facing our nation. How naive, uninformed, and foolish I was back then to think any of my proposals had a realistic chance of being adopted when the ruling class had created the system and reaped the benefits from maintaining it just as it is. Now, I don't know what his solutions were. And I have no idea, you know, how many times did I say the solution is you changing your own self. You doing that work necessary to change. You doing that self-reflective work, working on those issues, resolving them, and then you'll actually see that when you were saying prior to that work that you do on yourself, when you were saying how much you cared about things, you'll get to see you didn't because your care was not a generative care. It didn't generate action didn't motivate you to do something. So, yeah, all right. Um, system is rigged. We all know that. And I would say the majority of Americans do know the system's rigged. They couldn't possibly not. I, I can't at this point. Well, maybe there are still some who really believe that we live in this free market, freedom-loving country. I don't know. The argument, this is Carol Quigley, by the way, that Clinton's uh, bills, Bill Clinton's mentor, Carol Quigley, the argument that the two parties should represent opposed ideals and policies, one perhaps of the right and the other of the left, is a foolish idea accepted only to doctrinaire and academic thinkers. Instead, the two parties should be almost identical so that the American people can throw the rascals out at any election without leading to any profound or extensive shifts in policy. And that's what's been going on my entire life, for sure. Ah, oh, yes. So, then it should be possible to replace every four years, if necessary, by the other party, uh, which will be none of these things, but will still pursue with n new vigor approximately the same basic policies. You know, you would, you would like to think that eventually people would get it. You know, it doesn't seem to matter whether it's Democrats or Republicans, you know, controlling Congress or in the White House. Seems that everything just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. The only solution is for every individual to just not play their game. Um, you got the micro solutions. The individual can uh, continue to work to expose this criminal enterprise, uh, to known, known as our government. Uh, depending on your financial resources, location, occupation, personalities, we can all take actions which provide more freedom and distance from the corrupt system. Some actions are easier than others, but every step in the right direction pushes us closer to a tipping point where good outweighs evil. Make no mistake, we are at war with evil men and women with evil intentions, and they have no qualms about killing you or your family, but your individual actions, you take them, you let go of the result. That's what I'm having a really hard time with lately. But you take the actions, you let go of the results. You continue to do whatever it is that you can do to educate and expose these agendas, the evil, and then, you know, 
reduce your debt, you know, uh, disconnect from your technological imprisonment, your phones, um, keep them from tracking you, reducing your taxable footprint if possible, help starve the beast, associating with like-minded people and disassociating from untrustworthy establishment supporting stooges. It'll help give you clarity. Yeah. Raising your own food, forming an alliance or friendships with local farmers, reducing your dependence on the toxic manufactured food industry. Well, it'll keep you healthy and it'll keep you, you know, alive a little bit longer. Get healthy, move out of the cities, stay away from crowds, have your guns cleaned up and prepared. Become part of a community online or in person where ideas are shared, different viewpoints are heard. Prepare for energy and food shortages. Oh, oh, so many shortages, which I'll get into in a second. Um, yeah, try to buy some gold, silver, land, crypto, whatever. Um, I do know that there are some of you who have these resources. I know that a lot of you used to have them and don't anymore. I know that some of you are completely alone and have no resources whatsoever to change your circumstance. I, well, <clears throat> That can actually make life very incredibly, incomprehensibly difficult. So do not consume, save. Do not obey, resist. Do not believe, think. Do not trust, investigate. Do not conform, rebel. Do not submit, withdraw your consent. So based on this uh, global experiment conducted by the oligarchs, the globalists call them whatever you want. Over the last year, it appears only a small fraction of the population seem capable of independent thought and a willingness to resist entering the technological gulag orchestrated by our gatekeepers. There may be no implementable solutions on a grand scale. We know that. We need people to wake up, to care, to have their spiritual house inside their own self in a healthy uh, position. How many people do you know like that? So, uh, he talks of having a semblance of hope once their master plans self-destruct and crumble under the weight of hubris an ego-driven ambition. Cracks in the facade already forming. Gates, Fauci, Cuomo for glorifying themselves ahead of the agenda. I don't know about that. Uh, I think at this point, because we have a majority of Americans who don't care about anything, they're not thinking, and all the emails coming out of Fauci, who cares? Who really cares? Cuomo? Who cares? Gates? Who cares? Quigley held out hope based upon human virtues, and that is greatly lacking in our Western populations, not just this country, having had correspondence with a whole lot of people around the world virtues which have fallen out of favor but still exist among a portion of the population. I know they exist because the online community I call home has people with these qualities in abundance and a number of these friends will be getting together at a farm, New Hampshire, July 4th to celebrate. Our quaint belief we can help once again set 
brush fires of freedom in the minds of men and seize the moral high ground from the criminal cabal who occupy it right now. Our choices are few and road ahead difficult, but we have no other choice. So, Carol Quigley again said, the hope for the 20th century rests on recognition that war and depression are man-made and needless. They can be avoided in the future by turning from the 19th century characteristics just mentioned, materialism, selfishness, false values, hypocrisy, secret vices, and going back to other characteristics that our Western society has always regarded as virtues, generosity, compassion, cooperation, rationality, and foresight, and finding an increased role in human life for love, spirituality, charity, and self-discipline. These virtues are what create a healthy society. These virtues are in most Americans and we're living in a very sick and twisted that the pathology, societal pathology, it's killing people. So, what do we got? <clears throat> We've got uh Nope. Former A.G. Bill Barr, <clears throat> Jesuit, and having done some research, lots of problem with this guy. Okay. But Bill Barr issues massive warning about America's public school system, outlines action plan, and warned that the increasingly militant and extreme secular progressive climate in our state-run educational system was the greatest threat to religious liberty in America and that too many people are only looking at the problem in relation to what it means for national unity unity, and not what it means for long-term religious liberty in America. I'd say just liberty um, because that you know, liberty only for you guys and not for a whole lot. No. Okay. Liberty. A national security issue. A serious national security issue. The threat of what is going on in the schools. National security issue. But Biden... Biden thinks this is the national security issue. The joint session of Congress, according to the intelligence community, terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today. Not ISIS, not Al Qaeda, white supremacists. The joint session of Congress, according to the intelligence community, terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today. Not ISIS, not Al Qaeda, white supremacists. The and he gets applause. White supremacists, the number one lethal threat in our homeland today. Now, you have to be a moron to believe that. But who are those white supremacists? You know, right? those right-wing domestic terrorists. The right-wing. Huh. And here you got Barr. It's the militant and extreme secular progressives. Okay. Division, 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 divide and conquer. Yeah, four easy rules. And I say easy because it was easy for the communist takeover. Did you see it on my, on my channel that I posted, I think, yesterday? Well, 
White supremacy, really? That's the number one threat. Um, oh, Glenn Greenwald, by the way, you might want to bookmark his Substack page because he's writing a lot of really good articles. And it was funny because I saw this article today. You know, Glenn Greenwald was, you know, years ago he was one of the darlings on Democracy Now!, um, invited on the left-wing media. No longer. Uh-uh-uh. No longer. Okay. He's speaking truth an awful lot. And now I see this mainstream media article about Glenn Greenwald, how, well, essentially it was he's become like the darling of the right. I can't remember the headline, but I'm like, Oh, my God, dichotomous thinking. Keep everybody. So it, you know, that's the only clear thing, the divisions in our country. That's it. That's clear. Division, division, division. Uh, Glenn Greenwald is about as right-wing as I am. But uh, the new domestic war on terror has already begun, even without the new laws Biden wants. Okay, this is our number one threat, not just Biden, but everybody in Washington, D.C. Um, yeah, I, I may read this, m maybe not, but the Department of Homeland Security and the intelligence agencies are putting out warnings about this domestic threat. And they put out, you know, warnings like dating, dating the threat to manifest, and it doesn't. And it, they did it since um, January 6th. And here, January 14th warning. Um, violence in Washington, D.C. And all 50 state capitals. It was likely to explode in violent protest, Inauguration Day. January 7, 20, uh, 27, bulletin warning a heightened threat environment across the United States that is likely to persist over the coming weeks from ideological motivated violent extremists with objections to the increase of governmental authority. Uh, didn't manifest. May 14, warning of right-wing violence to attack higher capacity targets exacerbated by the lifting of COVID no uh, lockdowns. Never happened. Then they put out a warning that there was going to be violent attacks over the, uh, the Tulsa um, just a couple of days ago. The Tulsa massacre. And that didn't realize, uh, uh, manifest. So, just like the war on terror, uh, we've got the war on domestic extremists. And yes, mainstream media is hyping it. If you're not paying attention, I hope you do start because, uh, well, I've posted videos on this summer. They're looking at a very violent summer. But all of these divisions, when you see what's happening to the economy, when you see what's happening to the American people, when you see their own government officials leaving them out of the equation, white Americans left out of the equation, all Americans left out of the equation, uh, Harris is going down to Guatemala. She has not gone to the border yet. You know, she was put in charge of this crisis at the border. No, she's going to Guatemala to give them money, you know, to help them with their situation. Hello, Vice President Harris. Uh, I think Americans need help. All right, that kind of talk, rhetoric, is going to get people more and more angry as more and more fall into that circumstance of needing help. So, 
yeah, we've seen this scam before. I mean, Americans are just so programmed that they'll just believe anything they hear, not realizing that they've heard it and heard it and heard it over and over again. Pretty much the same thing. Fear is crucial for state authority. When the population is filled with it, they will acquiesce to virtually any power the government seeks to acquire in the name of keeping them safe. But when fear is lacking, citizens will crave liberty more than control. And question official claims and actions. When that starts to happen, when the public feels too secure, institutions of authority will reflexively find new ways to ensure they stay engulfed by fear and then get them to bow down. And guess what? You know what? We've got a lot of afraid Americans. So, but, it, you know, it's not just the right-wing domestic extremists. They're coming after the anti-vaxxers, uh, those who who happen to want the immigration laws enforced, those who would like to see the Constitution, um, well, I don't know, be respected, and, you know, those who take their oath of office actually fulfill that oath. Um anybody who goes against the agendas. And understand this, when Americans are so afraid and they've stopped thinking and they let their government officials or mainstream media do their thinking for them, anything can happen. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's that white supremacy, <laughs> the most lethal threat to the homeland today, to the homeland. Okay, um, I think we have bigger pressing issues. Joe, Joe, but I just want to show you this. You know, this woman put out this tweet. An angry mob attacked our capital, our lawmakers, and our election. They killed a policeman, and Republicans, well, and Republican leaders would rather we all not know more about what happened. Oh, yeah, Democrats. We have to. We have to form a commission to find out exactly what happened on January 6th. You've got all the information you need to know what happened. It wasn't an insurrection at all, at all. And, you know, this came out a couple of days ago. It's already been established that that policeman died, suffered two strokes, and died of natural causes. Just keep the lie going. Keep the lie going. Keep it going. And people won't call this woman out. Now, granted, she's a scary woman, and she has been hmm, known to, well, not like her critics. He killed a policeman just a couple of days ago, and it was well established, I'd say probably six weeks ago, that Brian Sicknick died from stroke, natural causes. How dare this go on? Oh, right. We don't live in a moral country. It ain't Christian. It ain't moral. It's, it likes to believe it is, though. So, um, inflation will be a pretty big shock. BlackRock, CEO, manages more money than the Fed, but hey, you keep believing the Fed when they downplay the inflation that you're already experiencing, but it will be a pretty big shock. Oh, 
I'd say that that is probably a bigger threat than white supremacy. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd, I'd have to do much more research. Yeah. Largest meat producer getting back online after cyber attack. Another cyber attack and JBS meat. It, it, they have... Um, they have these processing plants in several countries, the world's largest meat processing company, has resumed most production after a weekend cyber attack. Now, remember, the World Economic Forum is having a simulation. It's coming up, I believe, in July. Oh, about cyber attacks. What will happen with a massive cyber attack? It'll make that COVID thing look like the most fabulous vacation you've ever had. More and more are we seeing cyber attack, cyber attack, cyber attack. Okay, we had the pipeline attack and lots of questions. They did not, that cyber attack did not disrupt their operations. It was billing. Oh, so who shut down the pipeline? The CEO. Why? Oh, because they were afraid the hacker might shut it down. Oh, it was preventative. But it left a whole lot of gas stations without any gas. And, well, gas prices skyrocketed. Yeah, well, at least the hacker didn't get to the operations, just the CEO. Uh, Biden says he is looking closely at retaliation over Russian-linked cyber attack. <laughs> okay, I believe I posted a video when the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack, that news came out. It was the Russians. That's what the Dems said. It was the Russians. Now, this cyber attack against JBS, it's the Russians. You keep believing the horse shit you hear, Americans. <laughs> it's going to get you somewhere. Uh, not anywhere good, but it'll get you somewhere. Yeah, and retaliation. Oh, this is how big and tough <laughs> the Biden administration is. They're looking closely at retaliation. They're not sure if they want to retaliate. And they're going to discuss it during the summit meeting with Biden and Putin. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Okay. It's the Russians. Impact of ransomware attack on Mass, Massachusetts Steamship Authority. Another one. Oh my God. What, what happened here? The Steamship Authority, the Woods Hole, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and Cape Cod affected operations. Well, not a lot of people were able to get there. It was, it was inconvenient for all those who, I guess, have fabulous places on Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. Um, Apple confirms Apple Card out outage affecting all users. What does this mean? Well, it means that Apple Card outage today ongoing, well, ongoing earlier today. I don't know if it's still ongoing, but ongoing all users are affected. Users may not be able to manage their Apple Card, make payments, and may not see recent transactions. And we're going. We're, we're, we're just headlong, boom, right into the cyber world. And these outages, AT&T &E, AT users, your phones, sorry, outages, Baltimore, Washington Metro. Um, let's see, ransomware scourge continues as essential services are hit. All right, attacks on infrastructure are a part of a global criminal pivot from stealing data to hobbling operations. And we've had many, even just in May, um, cyber attacks, transportation systems, New York, Massachusetts, uh, how about hospitals and, um, well, meat processing plants and 
blew all the pipeline. No, that was the CEO. So, Memorial Day gas prices are the highest in seven years and could stay high all summer. This is going to hurt an awful lot of Americans. And what's Biden going to do about it? He's going to suspend drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge because those polar bears that don't need saving because they're absolutely fine, well, the narrative is they're dying off. Okay. So, oh boy, refinery ablaze, Navy's largest ship sinks, and day of suspicious mishaps. Well, Iran, their refinery burning up, and a Navy vessel sinks. One day, I'd be suspicious, but refineries burning up, we've had a lot of them. I don't think that portends good news. Pallet shortage, a pallet shortage, creates a new transportation challenge for agriculture, supply chain disruption. Pallet shortages, wood, very expensive. Chamber of Commerce confirms U.S. labor shortage, national economic crisis. Oh, my God. And white supremacy is the number one threat. But here is the beige book, the Fed's beige book, which they publish eight times a year. It is a publication from the Fed about current economic conditions across the 12 Fed reserve districts. Economic conditions, well, I'll link below to it if you want to read the 31 pages, but let's just, let's just do this quickly. Summarize. Fed's beige book freaks out over unprecedented nationwide shortages of everything. It also states prices are going up and incomes are kind of stagnant. Hmm. Well, broken supply chains, lack of workers, critical commodities can't be procured, all resulting in sharply higher prices, slower delivery times, all around chaos. Okay. But if you want to read the details, go ahead. Uh, we're in bad shape. We've got a lot of threats. World faces longer supply shortage as China's factories squeezed. Oh my God. It's just coming from every Every corner, every angle, it's, it's not going to be good. Not going to be good. Uh, Biden's budget proposal forces taxpayers to fund abortions. Yippee! Yay! You know what, Democrats? Oh, and I was a lifelong Democrat up until Obama. Yeah, he showed me the way. Um, you are batshit crazy if you could possibly support this guy. Oh, ship carrying auto parts sinks off Japan coast. We, we, you know, there was another ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. Fortunately, it didn't create any, um, well, backlog on all of the ships delivering all of those commodities, but we seem to have this kind of stuff all over. I have to wonder, could be, could be, could be deliberate. Okay, here, okay. U.S. faces record unemployment and homelessness, but hey, Senate preps for the $10 billion bailout for Jeff Bezos. You think people are going to get really angry? You think it's only Republicans who are hurting economically? Democrats, too. But you know what? No matter what happens and no matter what, what party they belong to, it will be a right-wing terrorist. George Soros gets a COVID loan. George Soros. Jeff Bezos, $10 billion bailout. George Soros, do you see what's happening? 
we've got a criminal cabal in Washington, D.C., and they, do, they are doing a massive redistribution of wealth for the top 1%. And they don't give a shit about you, me, or anybody else. That's why it was really important to start caring about one another. So, yeah, uh, millions of Americans could face eviction as housing protection expires in June. But the number one threat, white supremacy. New poll, Americans aren't willing to pay for the Green New Deal. And it's not even close. Well, the number one threat could be AOC. How she takes this. No, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're willing to pay for or not. If they want the money to go to this, it will. Because you just don't matter. You haven't mattered for a very long time. But you keep playing this stupid game that's fatal. You keep playing this stupid game to your own demise, at your own expense. These people do not care about you. They do whatever the hell they want to do. They are screwing you up the wazoo. They keep telling you that white supremacy is the number one threat. And we've got so many threats going. You don't think the economy is the number one threat we face right now? Don't you think that they should be working on this economy? Okay. <sighs> Stupid. Ignorant, indifferent, apathetic, propagandized. I don't know, left their brain somewhere at a lunch counter decades ago and allowed mainstream media to get in there and work their, what they think is their brain. We're in big trouble. So, yeah, there is no solution except what you do for your own self and your community and your loved ones. All links are below. Oh, maybe I'll just say this at the end of every video. Good night and good luck.